This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So I've worked in a regular IT corporate environment for the longest time. And even though I hated the work, I loved how organized everything was there. Everything from the development phase of a tool to the final testing phase of it in a production environment is planned out and structured out from top to bottom. And all of it in just an Excel sheet. And I'm sure similar workflows exist in bigger VFX companies and animation studios too because I've seen glimpses of it in a lot of Corridor Crew videos. So I'm sure it exists there as well. But what about us individual artists like you and I who have a lot of skills and a lot of passion and a lot of resources at hand except some self-discipline and some structure. So this is where this checklist comes in. This checklist is just a list of things that I found myself doing over and over again in almost all my projects to maintain a certain quality standard amongst them all. Things I read on Twitter or things I heard these experts say in these VFX artists react series on the Corridor Crew channel or things that I have come to realize myself all in one single place so I can maintain that consistent standard in all my renders and not commit silly beginner and intermediate mistakes just because I forgot some tips and tricks that I could have just easily jotted down when I first heard of them. So yeah, let's go through them all, one by one. What I've done here in this sheet is I have made a lot of categories for the different stages you go through during a render. And more often than not, I find myself using the bottom half of the sheet relatively more regularly. That covers the rendering and composition and lighting and post-processing parts of a render. So let's go through them first because I feel like that's where the real value of this whole thing is. But we'll go through the initial categories as well as the video progresses. So let's get started. And the funny thing is there's not much to say here because this is how it usually goes for me. I start a render. I model everything, I texture everything, and I light everything, and then I render it all, and it obviously turns out to be absolute garbage, and that's when I come to this list to see where I could improve. Like for example, say I am struggling with the lighting of a particular scene, what I would do is I would come to this list and look through the lighting category up here, and try out the different experiments that are mentioned here. Like the first thing under the lighting section here, as you can see, is mixing two HDRIs. For instances, when you like one aspect of one HDRI and the other aspect of another one, you can just mix them both together and get a combined lighting effect. Effect. Or you could use images and videos to project some interesting looking lighting like Gleb Alexandrov taught in his newest lighting course. Or you could try gobos or IES textures in your lights. There's also this extra details category with points like adding a volume box into your scene. It's such a fundamental thing to add a volume box in your 3D scene but the number of times I've forgotten to do that as well is just bizarre. So now I just have it as a checklist item so I never forget to add it in any of my projects. Not just that, extra details like floating dust particles and floating leaves and tumbling paper bits or 2D smoke cards or literally images and videos for background details. Things that you usually forget because they're still not part of your CGI muscle memory. I love the composition section too because this is where it really starts entering the expert territory if you allow me to call it that. Checklist items like is the camera at an angle where a real camera could actually be or composition tips like drawing lines through your render to see where the eye of a viewer might be guided to in the scene when they first look at it. There's also links here to composition guides I found on Twitter like this one from Mitch Louie where he goes through the different kinds of composition your scene could have or just simple tips like trying different focal lengths and aspect ratios and lens types here in Blender. There's also a section for rendering here where I remind myself to pay attention to the final format of the whole thing, pay attention to the frame rate, light bounces and options like motion blur or trying out different view transforms like Filmic or AGX or Aces. But then comes the most important and the most used part of this checklist which is the post processing section. But before we get to that, let's hear a little bit about today's sponsor Squarespace. Now a lot of you might not know this but I am a computer science graduate and one of my least favorite subjects in the four years of engineering I did was web design because I sucked at it making a website is really difficult a website that is functional and also looks good is just impossible so I think you should trust me when I say this that Squarespace is all you're ever gonna need to make a website they have controls and customizability features for the amateur and the expert alike they offer state-of-the-art templates and AI tools and everything in between you're ever gonna need to build a website so yeah, if you're looking to make one, head on to squarespace.com and try it all out for free for yourself. And once you are ready to launch that website, head on to squarespace.com slash stash to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So yeah, go check them out before the deal runs out. All right, back to the video now. Let's talk about the post-processing section here on the list. In this section, I remind myself of either simple things like remembering to enable depth of field or add a little bit of camera shake 
or enable the chromatic aberration in the compositor tab or blurring the whole thing a little bit cause CG renders turn out way too sharp right out of the box. Things like that or post processing effects like lens flares and lens dirt or trying out custom bokeh shapes or some anamorphic ratios here in the camera tab or simple animation tips like trying out a rack focus effect to add a little more realism into the camera motion. Or just add overlays in your editing software of choice. Dust overlays, god rays, steam and smoke overlays, or literally anything. This underwater scene you see here is 50% blender and 50% just weird overlays of bubbles and caustics and ocean waves and whatnot. So yeah, it's either just fundamental things like that or some batshit crazy expert advice I learned from some obscure video years ago. Tips like enabling the false color mode to make sure the final render isn't overexposed or underexposed in some regions. Crazy stuff like that that you can very easily forget if you don't do it regularly. But keep a note, this isn't a full-fledged list because neither am I a full-fledged artist yet. So I keep adding points to this list if and when I learn them. But the point I'm trying to make here is not to use this exact list because this has been curated for just my particular use case, which is usually revolving somewhere around photorealism. The point really is to make your own Excel sheet if you really want to get the best out of a workflow like this. I'll make sure I make this sheet available for everybody out there no matter what. But I feel like it is still worth saying that the merit of this list really lies in a custom made one rather than a borrowed one. And also, I know this is a very mechanical, very robotic or a very corporate way of approaching art. So I'm not saying this is for everybody. Even I don't use it in every project. But I often find myself coming back to it from time to time, especially in times when I'm feeling a little stuck, a little creatively blocked at times. So yeah, it's only a tool and not a magic spell of some kind that will suddenly make you a god at Blender or whatever tool you're currently using. It's just a tool, so use it as that and nothing else. But enough preaching, let's now get to the initial part of the Excel sheet. Cover topics like pre-production and modeling and shading that are left out in the beginning of the video. Now these categories are specifically for instances when I'm really feeling stuck at a particular stage of a render. Like say this pre-production category is for when I have not even opened up a blend file and I'm already feeling a little lost. That's when tips like collecting reference images and blocking out the initial idea you have with just cubes helps out a lot. And then the modeling category just lists different ways you can approach modeling. There have been a lot of instances where I felt stuck looking at a shape on a reference image and just baffled on how I should approach modeling it. That's when I come to this modeling section of the list and read through the items mentioned here one by one. Like maybe the model could benefit from an image projection approach or maybe a boolean or a subdivision modeling approach. Maybe it could benefit from the different proportional editing options up here or maybe it would just benefit from a straight up photo scanning approach. Just different modeling methods and techniques I find myself forgetting from time to time. There's also some animation tips here. Questions like can anything in the scene benefit from a noise based procedural animation or can anything be animated using the wiggle bones add-on or the shape keys feature here in Blender. We'll also find links to Twitter posts by awesome community members that explain some simple animation principles if you feel stuck in a particular animation project. The shading category here is also very interesting. It usually reminds me to make use of handy alternatives like decals or imperfection textures just in case I forget to use them. Basically, all I'm trying to say here at this point is there's a lot of fundamental things that an artist can from time to time forget to use or implement in their workflow because it isn't something that has been embedded into their CGI workflow muscle memory yet. So this is a list I made for myself and thought might come in handy to some other beginner or intermediate artists just like me here on this channel. So after all this hogwash and gibberish that are thrown on you here in this video, if you still want to grab this checklist to implement it to your own workflow, you will find the link to it on a free Patreon post I have linked in the description. I'll make sure from my end to keep it as updated as I can as I keep learning newer things. There could be some points on there that might not make any sense to you at all. So just drop a comment down below on this video and let me know what points confused you and maybe I can clear that up for you right there or here on the sheet itself. Also, if you feel like you have some points you'd like to contribute to add to this list, please let me know in the comment section below again so I can add them on there for everyone to see and use. But yeah, that's it for this video. I have nothing more to say here other than check out the list and let me know your thoughts on it. And also thanks for watching till the end if you did. I will hopefully catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.